The Pacific Northwest is a scenic, physically attractive area of the United States, with a mixture of coastal areas and mountainous, volcanically active areas. Oregon and Washington are two major states in the region, but how do they compare? Let's assess both in the latest State Comparison Series episode. Oregon and Washington were both Western territories well into the 19th century, and ultimately both became states, Oregon in 1859 and Washington 30 years later in 1889. Before European exploration, the region now known as Oregon was inhabited by many indigenous tribes, such as the Chinook, Klamath, and Nez Perce. These tribes had rich cultures and traditions, with economies primarily based on fishing, hunting, and gathering. After settlers came in the 19th century, the territory grew rapidly thanks to the Oregon Trail, a 2,170-mile wagon route that went from Missouri to Oregon. Oregon became the 33rd state of the United States in 1859. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw significant economic growth, spurred by industries like timber, fishing, and agriculture. Throughout the 20th century, Oregon experienced further economic and demographic transformations. World War II brought industrial growth, particularly in shipbuilding. Post-war, the state's economy diversified with the development of technology and service industries. Today, Oregon is known for its progressive policies, vibrant cultural scene, and diverse landscapes, from the Pacific coastline to the Cascade Mountains. Washington was also settled by Native American tribes such as the Yakima, Spokane, and Puget Sound Salish. These cultures relied primarily on fishing, hunting, and gathering. The mid-19th century saw an influx of American settlers driven by the Oregon Trail and the promise of land. Washington, initially part of the Oregon Territory, became a distinct entity due to increasing population and demand for separate governance. Washington became the 42nd state of the United States in 1889. The state's early economy was dominated by timber, fishing, and mining industries. The late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed the growth of agriculture and the development of hydroelectric power, fostering further economic diversification. The 20th century was marked by significant industrial growth, especially during World War II, when the state became the center for war-related industries like shipbuilding and aircraft production. In recent decades, Washington has become a hub for technology and innovation. Today, the state is known for its progressive policies, diverse population, and rich cultural scene. Both Oregon and Washington are regionally and nationally important states, and we are going to compare both. In today's State Comparison Series episode, we are going to focus on both the physical geography and human geography of both states. In terms of physical geography, we will review three main factors, geomorphology, meteorology, and ecology, while with human geography, we will review four main factors, demography, urbanization, economy, and geopolitics. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science. Let's get started. Starting with the geomorphology, both Oregon and Washington are quite similar, in that each state has a coastline in the Pacific Ocean and high volcanic mountains that separate the western and eastern parts. But there are some differences. Oregon has a nearly 300-mile coastline with the Pacific Ocean, and much of it is rugged, with features such as wave-cut platforms and sea cliffs. Just eastward of the coast are some mountains and hilly areas, however, most are not very elevated. Around 100 miles inland, the terrain begins to increase in elevation. The Cascade Mountains, a volcanically active ridge, runs through the state and has many notable stratovolcanoes, very eruptive ones within. One is Mount Hood, an active stratovolcano in the highest peak in Oregon at an elevation of 11,249 feet. Another notable stratovolcano is Mount Mazama, which has a caldera lake called Crater Lake, the deepest freshwater lake in the United States. In the eastern part of Oregon, the terrain is flatter with some rolling hills and mountains, and much of it is plateaued. Oregon is prone to seismic activity, including violent earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the risk of direct coastal impacts from tsunamis. Heading northward, Washington has a similar topographical profile to Oregon with notable differences. 
The state has a long coastline with the Pacific Ocean, but also has more intercoastal waterways in Oregon, with one being the Puget Sound, a brackish estuary. This estuary separates topography with the state, as on the western side of the Olympic Mountains, a coastal range with the highest peak being Mount Olympus at an elevation of 7,980 feet. In between is the Seattle metropolitan area, a mostly low-lying area with some hills and small mountains. Further east of that is the Cascade Mountains, and like Oregon, Washington has many notable stratovolcanoes. One is Mount St. Helens, a stratovolcano that erupted violently in May of 1980. Another more worrying volcano is Mount Rainier, the highest peak within Washington, at an elevation of 14,411 feet. The reason why it's more of a concern is that it hasn't erupted in nearly 200 years, meaning that one is likely overdue. Further eastward of the Cascades, Washington is an elevated plateaued area like Oregon. And the state is seismically active, with the threat from severe earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. Since both Oregon and Washington are physically large, meteorology is differentiated. Right along the coastline, Oregon's climate is relatively mild year-round, thanks to the marine influence from the Pacific Ocean. In cities such as Portland, Salem, and Eugene, temperatures have a moderate range throughout the year. Summer temperatures are usually in the 70s for highs, and winter temperatures are usually in the 40s, with much of the precipitation mostly rain falling then. Sometimes, cold air intrusions may affect these cities, and snow or freezing rain can fall, creating a lot of weather headaches. The Cascade Mountains separate the wetter west from the drier east. Cities such as Bend and Redmond are a lot drier than western cities, and are classified climatically as semi-arid, receiving around 11 inches of rain per year. Being east of the Cascade Mountains creates a blocking mechanism, so marine air has a harder time making its way to the east. Therefore, summertime temperatures are in the 80s, and wintertime temperatures are usually in the upper 30s to low 40s, with a chance for more snow. The meteorological profile for Washington is very similar. Coastal Washington has an oceanic climate featuring dry mild summers and cool to mild wet winters. Much of the state's population lives within this climatic zone in and around Seattle. Again, the Cascade Mountains separate the wetter west from the drier east. And within the mountains, lots of precipitation, usually snow, falls, with Mount Rainier and other high volcanoes getting feet upon feet of snow throughout the winter. East of the mountains, much of the state has a semi-arid continentally influenced climate with hot dry summers and cool to cold winters with some snow. During dry stretches, especially in the summer and the fall, wildfires can be an issue, though many of them do not affect populated areas as often in states such as California. Ecologically, both states have a diverse array of flora and fauna species. The Oregon coast is known for its rugged cliffs, sandy beaches, and temperate rainforest. It is home to diverse marine life, including sea lions, whales, and various seabird species. The coastal forests are dominated by Sitka spruce and western hemlock. The Cascade Mountains, being elevated, features more subarctic species of plants and animals, such as coniferous forest and alpine meadows, and, below the snow line, animals such as black and brown bears, cougars, and elk make their homes. Eastern Oregon has a dry semi-arid ecology, so flora species are sparser and feature sagebrush steppe, a sharp species adjusted to drier climatic conditions. Wildlife here include pronghorns, sage grouse, and various reptiles adapted to arid conditions. Washington has a similar ecology to Oregon, although its more northern latitude and higher volcanic mountains produce arctic-like ecosystems in the highest elevations. One unique ecosystem is associated with the coastally located Olympic Mountains, which is known for its temperate rainforests, some of the wettest areas in the continental United States. This particular region supports diverse ecosystems, including alpine meadows and old-growth forests with species like western hemlock and Pacific silver fir. On to human geography, let's start off with demography. There are parallels and contrasts between Oregon and Washington. Initially, Oregon was the fastest growing state in the Northwest up until the 1880s. Currently, the state has 4.2 million residents, placing it 27th in the nation. Historically, the state has been majority white, and still is, but the percentage has decreased. And as of 2020, whites make up 74.8% of the population. The fastest growing and largest minority group are Hispanics at 13.9%, 
with most of them being Mexican. Asians also make up a sizable 4.6% of the population. Ethnically, Germans make up the highest percentage with 19.1%, followed by Irish and English at 11.7% and 11.3%. The western, more urbanized part of the state tends to be more diverse, while the eastern part of the state is mostly white. On to Washington, the state has seen significant growth in the last 130 years. By 1890, Washington surpassed Oregon's population thanks to Seattle's rapid growth, and today, the state has 7.9 million residents, nearly double Oregon's population and ranked 13th. Racially, Washington is majority white at 63.8%, and Hispanics make up the largest minority group with 13.7%, and right behind them are Asians with 11.8%. There is also a sizable black population within Washington, mostly within the Seattle metropolitan area. Similarly to Oregon, ethnically Germans have the highest percentage with 17.8%, followed by Irish and English with 10.8% and 10.4%. And also like Oregon, Eastern Washington is mostly white. Both Oregon and Washington have remarkable cities and urbanized areas with notable contrast. Oregon's largest city is Portland, with a city population of a little over 652,000 and a metropolitan area population of 2.5 million, 60% of the state's population. Portland is on the border with Washington, and several suburbs are within that state, including Vancouver, Washington. Southward, Salem, the state capital, is second in population, followed by Eugene. The largest community east of the Cascades is Bend, with a population of 94,500. Oregon has a well-connected network of highways and generally ranks high in road quality. I-5, a major north-south interstate going from Canada and Mexico, traverses through the state, and many of the largest urban cities and metropolitan areas are located on the corridor. Another notable interstate highway is I-84, which connects Portland to Echo, Utah, just outside Salt Lake City. In most of the other parts of the state, only state and U.S. highways traverse. Since Washington has almost double the population in Oregon, it also has larger and more dense urban concentrations. Seattle is the largest city in the state, with 737,000 residents, but has a metropolitan area population of over 4 million, ranking 15th in the nation. Tacoma, the third largest city in the state, with 219,000 residents, is also within the Seattle metropolitan area. But, unlike Oregon, the second largest city, Spokane, with a population of 229,000 residents, is in the far eastern part of the state near Idaho. Washington also has a well-developed road network with many interstates crossing the state, including I-5, which connects many major urban centers within the more populated western part of the state, and I-90, the longest interstate highway in the United States, connecting Seattle and Boston, Massachusetts. One unique trait about Washington is the lack of bridges or tunnels over and under the Puget Sound connecting the Seattle metropolitan area to the Olympic Peninsula in the islands surrounding it. One reason is physically geographical in that the Puget Sound is very deep, averaging 450 feet deep, making it hard to build bridges or tunnels. Despite this, there are many ferries connecting the peninsula to the Seattle area. The economies of both Oregon and Washington are strongly diversified. However, diversification wasn't always a trait. During the 1880s, Oregon's population began to become higher thanks to rail networks, both civilian and freight. The railroads expanded the state's primary industries, such as agriculture and lumber, and Portland became known as Stumptown due to the significant rise of the lumber industry. Today, Oregon has a $270 billion GDP and a per capita income of over $64,000 a year, placing it higher than many other states in ranking. This has been helped from Oregon becoming a center for the tech industry, with an informally known as Silicon Forest. The state is a hub for technology and electronics, especially in and around the Portland area. Like many post-industrial economies, services, including healthcare, education, and retail, play a significant role in Oregon's economy. The state is home to highly ranked universities and hospitals. Still, a primary industry like agriculture remains a major sector, with the state being a leading producer of products like hazelnuts, cranberries, and wine. Oregon is known for being the headquarters of many well-known companies, including Nike, one of the world's largest suppliers of athletic shoes and apparel, 
Columbia Sportswear, a company known for outdoor apparel, footwear, accessories and equipment, and Precision Cast Parts Corporation, a company that manufactures metal parts for aerospace and general industrial markets. Northward, Washington also started out as a primary economy, with Seattle being founded as a timber town. Fast forward to today, Washington has a GDP of $725 billion and a per capita income of $92,000 a year, placing it in the top 10 of U.S. states. Diversification has helped the state achieve this, and Washington is associated with many different industries. One is the aerospace industry, which contributes significantly to exports and workforce. Like Oregon and California, the two other continental Pacific Coast states, Washington has a large tech industry, especially within the Seattle metropolitan area. Washington is one of the nation's largest producers of apples, cherries, pears, and hops. The agricultural sector plays a vital role with the diverse range of crops due to the state's varied climate zones. Washington is a growing life sciences sector where organizations engage in research and development in biotechnology, global health, and related fields, and the state is home to the University of Washington, one of the best research institutions in the country. Washington is headquarters of many very well-known multinational corporations, including Microsoft, a software company known for Windows, Amazon, an e-commerce company which sells practically everything, Boeing, an aerospace company supplying jets and many airlines, Costco, a wholesale big box club, and Starbucks, the largest coffeehouse chains in the world. On to geopolitics, Oregon and Washington have historically voted for Republican candidates in presidential elections, but this has changed in recent decades. When Oregon became a state in 1859, the first election it voted in was the 1860 presidential election where the state gave its electoral votes to Republican Abraham Lincoln. Republican candidates won more in presidential elections than Democrats up until the 1988 election when Oregon gave its electoral votes to Democrat Michael Dukakis. Since that election, the state has voted exclusively for Democrats. However, there is a huge geographic divide, as the more populated urbanized western part of the state usually votes for Democrats, while the sparser, less populated eastern part of the state usually votes for Republicans. Because of this, Oregon also has two Democratic U.S. Senators, Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley, and in the House of Representatives, four Democrats and two Republicans. Oregon's 5th Congressional District, a suburban district of Portland, flipped to Republicans in the 2022 race when Republican Lori Chavez de Rimmer won. On a state level, Oregon has a Democrat governor, Tina Kodak, who was elected in a 2022 gubernatorial election. Although she won, it was a closer election than usual, signaling a possible changing geopolitical trend. Another geopolitical movement is the Greater Idaho Movement, a conservative effort for eastern Oregon counties as well as some North California ones to join Idaho, a reliably Republican state. The movement has been put on county ballots, but even if residents vote to secede from Oregon, it will still need approval from Oregon and Idaho's state legislature and the U.S. Congress. Geopolitically, Washington is similar to Oregon in that there is a large west-east divide, with the more urbanized West voting for Democrats and the rural East voting for Republicans. The first presidential election Washington voted in was in 1892, when the state gave its electoral votes to losing Republican candidate Benjamin Harrison. In the very next election, Washington's electoral votes went to losing Democratic candidate William Jennings Bryan, and through the first 10 years of the 20th century, gave its electoral votes to winning Republican Theodore Roosevelt. Then, in the 1912 presidential election, Washington voted for Theodore Roosevelt again, but this time he was a third-party progressive candidate, which is the first and only time the state gave its electoral votes to a party besides Republicans and Democrats. From that time to the mid-1980s, Washington went back and forth between Republican and Democratic candidates, but in 1988, along with Oregon, the state gave its electoral votes to losing Democratic candidate Michael Dukakis and, since then, Washington has only voted for Democratic presidential candidates. The denser, more populated Seattle metropolitan area usually sways the vote towards Democrats. In terms of Congress, Washington has two Democratic senators, Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell, and in the House of Representatives, eight Democrats and two Republicans. On the state level, the state has a Democratic governor, Jay Inslee, 
who was elected in 2012 and re-elected in 2016 and 2020. By being in the Northwest United States, both Oregon and Washington are physically beautiful areas, with the Pacific Ocean as a coastline and the very high but unpredictable Cascade Mountains associated with stratovolcanoes. However, in terms of human geography, there are some internal issues that may change both states. Over the last century, Oregon and Washington have seen rapid population growth, but starting in the late 2010s, the more urbanized parts of the states, Portland and Seattle, have seen decreases. The reasons are similar to other large urban centers in the United States in that there has been a notable quality of life decrease in association with the rise of homelessness and frequent drug use, along with the rise in crime as well. The COVID pandemic exacerbated this decrease since a lot of work, especially within the tech sector, went remote, meaning less of a need for employees to travel to both cities or live there. Whether these problems will turn around soon is questionable. And, as mentioned before, the West-East political divide in both states may ultimately create more geopolitical issues. That concludes today's State Comparison Series episode. Thank you once again for watching. If you want to leave your feedback, please do so in the comment section below. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science. Until next time!